Hey guys, what is going on? Carter here. I am sitting outside on this beautiful day wanting to bring you the first knife video of my official comeback. Uh, one of the knives that kind of inspired me to really get back into the game. This is the Emerson Iron Dragon. Uh, it's fairly new. I just barely heard about it a few days ago actually as I was looking back into some forums and things like that since I've been away. I uh, just really haven't been that inspired to be fully into knives over the last year or so. Uh, I still carry every day and I still poke around every once in a while and uh, see what's out there but there hasn't been anything that really got me excited and this particular knife is one of the knives that did get me excited again and it's a bit of a contradiction and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but first let's just kind of get into what we're looking at here. Um, not going to do a ton of, of super in-depth specs, you can find that yourself, uh, but we have an Emerson frame lock knife here, which is not very common, uh, which is one of the reasons why this is exciting. 154 cm steel blade, per usual, uh, it's V-ground on the main bevel, uh, which is pretty common for Emerson, and then it has a single bevel grind. Uh, chisel grind on the uh, secondary bevel as you can see right there once again fairly common uh, for Emerson knives nothing nothing crazy there blade steel standard everything's pretty standard with the blade we'll talk a little bit more about uh, what, what does make it cool though we have a solid G10 handle on this side it is not the standard uh, texture that you find on Emerson knives, the usual Emerson knives, uh, although they do feature this on a few. This is the texture that you'll see on like a Strider knife. A little more aggressive, uh, a little less fine than the standard Emerson texture uh, that you'll get. You can see there's no liner on that side. It has standoffs instead of a backspacer, which is the new uh, way that Emerson is making knives. Solid titanium lock side right here. The relief is cut out on the inside instead of the outside. Uh, it has a lock bar insert, a steel insert, that also acts as an over-travel. You can see the screws right here. Standard pocket clip. I've put my uh, skull clip on this one, but the regular clip it comes with is the stainless steel colored clip. One thing that's unique about this particular knife is the stainless steel colored hardware instead of the black hardware you would typically see on an Emerson. The old school thin slot uh, pivot screw right there. It has hex screws holding the body and I believe this is the same thing that is on the Comrade, the CQC-12, which is the first, well I'm not sure if it's the first, but it's one of the first frame locks that Emerson ever did. Uh, however, that one did not have a lock bar insert. And this knife actually features a bearing system. Uh, inside here, which is also very unique. The only other knife that Emerson has that uh, has a bearing system is the Sheepdog Flipper, which is also his first uh, flipper that they've ever done. You can see the early, early lockup right there. Uh, this is kind of evidence that Emerson is listening to uh, their fan base as well as critics about their knives, and they're kind of uh, answering those questions and those critiques um, and coming out with more modern flavored knives and offering some of the newer features however uh, years and years late behind the game uh, but yeah I'll talk about that here in a minute I think that is uh, kind of by design on Emerson's standpoint ah oh, what the hell I'll talk about it right now um, Emerson kind of uh, built his brand off of the extra stuff the attitude the extra merchandise the history you know things like that he, he has never sold his knives based off of the latest features, the latest steels, things like that. His knives always have that traditional Emerson look and feel. He doesn't deviate from his general uh, materials or looks or design all that often. And I think he does that on purpose um, because he knows he really, at this point in the game, he can't compete with uh, Anthony Marfione, who's, you know, one of the guys on the cutting edge of new technologies, new design, new features, new materials. Wow, look at that fly right there. They they have no qualms. Does he realize how dangerous it is getting close to a super sharp Emerson knife? Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, he really can't compete with a lot of these 
modern stuff uh, that's going on right now. So he knows he needs to hold on to his traditional look. It's kind of like Levi's 501 jeans, uh, kind of what they go for. The, the history, the we're classic, we work, so on and so forth. And Emerson also knows that a knife is basically a knife and that the basic features are going to work for 99.99% of the people out there. Everything else is just kind of cool stuff to talk about, pocket jewelry, things like that. So I think he's made a conscious effort to say, my values are this, this, and this, and I'm really reluctant to switch away from those unless it really looks like a change is really, really needed. So he's very cautious with his changes. He's very cautious with catching up to the latest trends. He's always kind of behind, but he also skips some of the trends that come and go really quickly. Um, and some of the trends that end up being you know, you can tell, oh, that was a that was a knife that came out in the mid-2000s because that was a style that was really popular in the mid-2000s. Um, and then it kind of went away. He makes sure to stay away from some of those kinds of things uh, and, and really stick to uh, tried and true things. Another thing that I like about Emerson is uh, a lot of people complain about fit and finish. They complain about... Uh, the features, things like that, the price, all that stuff. Uh, but one thing that I do love about Emerson is his consistency with producing a razor sharp knife right out of the box with perfect grinds. I mean, look at that, look how even that is. I mean, I can't say that for Spyderco, I can't say that for Benchmade. They're good, they're sharp, uh, but they don't look like this. They're not perfect like this. I mean, look at that secondary bevel, it is like, tip all the way back it is perfectly even same with the primary bevel I mean just absolutely their blades are freaking beautiful and that's what this is when you buy a knife you're buying the blade the handle is really just something to hold the blade um, and Emerson knows that and he realizes he needs to make this blade top-notch and I think they do that uh, one thing that's really great about this knife is, well, really great or maybe not so great. It's very thin. If you look here, here's a standard, similarly sized uh, Emerson knife. This is a Commander, full-size Commander. Uh, you can see the thickness difference here in the handles without uh, the liners on the one on the right here. So it's a lot thinner and it's very light. Uh, let's take a look at how heavy it is here. Wait for this to turn on. I believe we're on we're on grams. Let's go to ounces. Okay, so 4.9 ounces. Actually, a little heavier than I was expecting. 4.9 ounces. Regular Commander is six ounces. So relatively the same size blade, but you're getting it quite a bit lighter. Uh, so really cool there. Now, when we're talking about well, first of all, let's talk about the bearings. Uh, very cool. I like to see them having the bearings in there. I don't know if I necessarily love bearings in a non-flipper knife. It's kind of unnecessary, but it's cool. I mean, it's sweet to do that. Everybody likes to do that. Centering's a little off. Uh, there's a few videos out there talking about why that is. From what I understand, uh, the pockets milled for the bearings aren't exactly perfect on both sides. So it's going to be off just a little bit. I mean, at first glance, it looks centered, but it is slightly off towards the presentation side. No blade play, up and down, left and right, rock solid. Uh, nice early lockup. It doesn't slip. Uh, very strong. I don't have any stick on my particular knife, but I have heard of people having a little bit of a sticky lock on the uh, Iron Dragon here. Uh, detent is absolutely perfect. Overall, it's uh, I think it's a very solid knife. Uh, but when we're talking, is it worth the money? Uh, just under $400 for this Iron Dragon, which for an Emerson is actually <laughs> a good price, I would want to say. Uh, the CQC12 uh, frame lock that he did is around the same price point, but you don't get the bearings, you don't get the lock bar, over travel, things like that. So for an Emerson, price point's good. For an Emerson, this is cutting edge. Uh, but for other knives out there, you can definitely get a better knife for a cheaper price. Um, however, if you are a Emerson lover like I am, for whatever reason, you can barely explain it. Uh, this is a very cool and exciting knife, and I am glad to have it in my collection and my pocket. I look forward to using it. I think it's sweet. I really like it. Uh, it's probably not for everybody. Like I said, there's, there's better knives out there, uh, logically speaking.
but uh, you just can't beat an Emerson. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Take it easy. I'll catch you on the next video.